All right, get your diapers on. Prepare for poopy bottom. It is cold brown today, gentlemen. I have dug up the microscope. We're going to check grain size. Kevin Cashin says you can heat treat 1070 to 1080 eutectoid low alloy steels forge side effectively, and I believe him. But within the confines of the three-hour knife challenge, I'm having some problems. Cracking open my first two three-hour knives revealed a really large, barely passable grain structure. That really wouldn't be a knife I'd want to send out of the shop. So the three-hour challenge has left me with two particular problems. First, my forge is cranked up very high to heat the steel quickly, to heat it just under forge welding temps where it moves easily under the hammer. And both those things are crucial to forging knife fast. But the high temps increase grain growth dramatically. Second, I'm thermal cycling immediately after forging. So despite turning the PSI way down on my forge, it's still very hot. And it quickly heats the knife beyond desirable temperatures. It's challenging to get things to the cherry red colors and only slightly hotter needed for normalization than quenching. I have two ideas on how I can overcome these obstacles. The first is increasing the normalization cycles to three with very careful attention to colors. The second is double quenching. Yes, double quenching may introduce other issues into the blade. People say it adds stress, though I admit I've never seen proof of that or an explanation of, for, of why that is. But the only thing I'm really concerned here with is grain size. And I think with proper care, risk of introducing fractures with the second quench is sort of minimal. So today what I'll be doing is forging a bar at high heat, then checking its grain structures. I put it through three normalization cycles then checking cutoff pieces of that with single and double quenches at each stage of normalization. So I'll normalize it once, cut off a piece, quench that piece once, check grain size, quench it again, check grain size again, go back to the original piece, do another normalization cycle, and so on. Here you can see I've gone through my first quench without any normalization. I'm breaking the piece. This is an example of how the process works. Again, the forge is set up just the way it will be within the confines of the three-hour knife challenge. Not at all like I would normally do this. It would normally be a much cooler forge at this point. So this is the first normalization cycle. Here's the second normalization cycle cooling. You can see the bar's a bit shorter, and now the third normalization cycle where I've cut off even more bar so far. So our result graph is set up like this. Moving down the graph will be increasing quenches. Moving across will be increasing normalization cycles. So this is our first piece. It's forged, no normalization, no quenching. That's a pretty huge crystalline grain structure. Ugly. So no normalization, but we're going to do some quenching now. All right, let's move on to our normalization cycle. One quench under one normalization cycle. You can see the difference there from the as forged no normalization cycles. And as we add quenches, I don't know, we may get a small benefit. Normalization cycle number two. Quench number two under normalization number two. We may be getting a little more refined. It's a little hard to tell. In our third normalization cycle, first quench looks pretty good. Second quench looks really good. I've done similar testing in the past with 5160, looking at tight temperature control versus just for forge side stuff. And I'll say that without tight temperature control, it's really hard to get good information here about what's working and what's not working. But if my supposition or theory is correct, then moving from top to bottom and moving from left to right, things should get smallest. So the smallest grain size should be in the bottom right. What do you guys think? I think moving left to right past the second normalization cycle, the trend sort of breaks down there. Moving top to bottom, that's tough to say. I think possibly that sort of holds up as, as in quench number two, seems to do better than quench number one, at least in a few cases. The most convincing trend would be, I think, moving from left to right across the quench number two row on the bottom there. So I think that would be the most 
compelling evidence uh, that that this is sort of working. But it's really hard to say. Again, without temperature control, you know, this data is not that good. But I will say I I think there's good reason to believe that if we did this with tight temperature control in a heat treat oven, that we probably would see this trend hold up of moving smaller, going from left to right and top to bottom. I don't know. That's just a theory, though. Okay, so I did a little more experimentation here, and I really want to see what you guys think about this because I think it changes the entire way I basically would interpret this, you know, quote-unquote experiment. Watch this. I took some leftover pieces after the third normalization cycle, so it's been normalized three times, and I got a bright, bright orange, pretty hot, overheated basically, and I quenched from an overheated state. And then I quenched from a lower heat state. It's basically sort of a red-orange, sort of the minimal quenching temperature. What I would say is probably 1475, or at least that would be the goal. Look at the grain structure on the overheated piece. This is after three normalization cycles. Where would you put it on the graph here? Where would you put it? Would you put it in the top left? That's as forged, and that's with three normalizations and a high heat quench. Now look at that. That's our low temperature quench. Where would you put that on the chart below? Yeah, absolutely. It's the best result by far. It's not even um, close. <laughs> it's really amazing. So what to make of all this? All I can tell you is how the steel behaved in my setup in a much less than scientific setting. My lessons and my takeaways are as follows. For forge site heat treating 1084, normalization cycles only seem to go so far in reducing grain size. They are important for a lot of reasons, but beyond the second cycle, I'm not sure there's much benefit here as far as grain goes. Lesson number two, doing a second quench on each piece probably reduced the grain size over the first quench, but... The best result here was not achieved with a second quench. It was one quench after three normalization cycles with very careful temperature control. Lesson number three, as always, temperature control is king and absolutely trumps everything else. You can see that in two spots here. You can see that despite three normalization cycles, when we intentionally overheated the steel, even for only half a minute, for only half a minute, the grain size was as large or maybe <laughs> maybe even larger than when it started. Also, take special care, taking special care to quench uh, from as low a temperature as I could from the forge and still have confidence it transformed resulted in the smallest grain size by far, handily beating out any other result here. So again, I think in a tight temperature control settings, such as in a heat treat oven, the theories that doing more normalization cycles, in this case at sequentially decreasing temperatures for 1084, would improve grain size, and double quenching would likely also be shown to decrease grain size. I, I'm pretty confident that I'd have to do that testing in my garage to make sure, but we sort of saw it here. But I think a lot of our results are drawn into question given the dramatic effect the steel's temperature at the time of quenching has on grain size despite normalization cycles. Again, it's entirely possible, for example, that a very, very excellent result could be achieved after one normalization cycle and only a single quench, provided that quench temperature was as low as possible. So I just can't believe how quickly those grains grew. That is such. This is such like an eye-opener for me in 1084 or forge side forge side quenching that that temperature there's no room for error there's no room for overheating at all it's really gosh it's really amazing and what and what temperature what do your temperatures look like in your forge based on the lighting and everything else temperatures look different so man i'd strongly encourage you guys to do this type of experimentation and make sure you know exactly what colors are in your forge setup and just how to get the most out of heat treating stuff at forge side.